YouTube, Edgar here, and welcome to Artifexy, and here you will learn everything you ever wanted to know about world building, and then some. So last time we looked at how to build a Tatooine-like system. This week, however, let's look at building an S-type system. Step 1. In the beginning there were stars. Okay, so this time build one star that has a mass anywhere between 0.6 and 1.4 solar masses. Call this star your primary and then go build your secondary star of mass less than or equal to your primary. Be sure that both stars fall within this Goldilocks mass range. Doing so will give us the option of creating a habitable planetary system around each of the stars. And I don't know much, but I know two is always better than one, right? Also, if this all sounds alien to you, no worries. Just click the links on screen or in the description for more info. Here's my stars, Vornak A and B and I'll set their masses at 0.8 and 0.6 solar masses. Step 2. Go big or go home. Next up, set the average separation of the stars. Somewhere between 120 and 600 AU will do nicely, but remember, the further apart your stars orbit each other, the better, so aim for a very high number here. I think I'll go with an average separation of 383 AU. Side note, some of you may notice, but 383 is a particularly cool number, not least because mathematicians call it a sexy problem. Prime. And hey, if there's one thing I like to do here on Artifexion, it's that given the opportunity, I like to get sexy. Step 3. Deja Vu Next up, use your average separation to calculate the barycenter, eccentricity, and overall maximum and minimum separation of the stars in your system. This is literally the same process as in the last video, so go mash that link up there for the formulas. So in my build, the Vornak system ended up looking a little like this. The cool thing to note here is that even though I selected relatively low eccentricities, the distances between Vornak A and B vary hugely, from 421.3 AU all the way up to 1110.7 AU. Step 4. Limit yourself. Next, figure out the inner and outer planetary limits of each of the stars. So in the last video, given that the stars were so close together, we could in effect treat them as one single star. Here not. Here we need to resort back to the old equations, not 0.1 times m for the inner limit, and 40 times m for the outer limit. Again, click the links for more info. After doing the maths, it turns out that Vornak A can have planets orbiting it between 0.08 and 32 AU, and Vornak B between 0.06 and 24 AU. Step 5. The zone that shall not be named. For this build, all we need to know is the inner edge of the forbidden zone given by one third the minimum separation of the stars. The goal here is to have the forbidden zone fall outside of the outer limit, so the effect of the other star on any one system is minimal and maximum stability is ensured. For the Vornak system, this inner forbidden zone edge falls at 140.23 AU, well outside the outer limit of both stars, which is ideal and means I can move on to... Step 6. Go forth and build. So the detailed part here is getting the stars set up correctly. Now that that's complete, go ahead and build yourself a planetary system around one of your stars or both of your stars. It's totally up to you. I went all out with Vornak. The Vornak A system looks like this and the Vornak B system 383 AU away looks like this. One S type binary star system, finito. Guys, if you like what you see here in Artifexy, click the links on screen or in the description to find me on Facebook and Twitter. And if you're interested, hit like and subscribe for more awesome science-based world building. Thank you all so much for watching. Edgar out.